Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Forest of Drizzling Rain. Forest of Drizzling Rain is a RPG Maker horror game, like most, that features you playing as a young girl stuck in a bad situation that only seems to get worse. I heard of the death of my parents on a day of terrible rain. It was a traffic accident. Hearing this sudden sad news, in a rush, I hurried to the hospital, but it was already too late. In the end, I was not able to see the death of my father and mother. The funeral was, as I wanted, performed in private. Both my parents cut ties with all other relatives and kid when I was little, and nobody was called to the funeral. It was a very quiet funeral. It just... For me, who lost my parents, I keenly felt my lack of relatives, and so I think I felt a little lonely. The day my father and mother died was, strangely enough, on my birthday. I think that in order to congratulate me, who has barely just gone to university, my parents were high in spirits unlike usual. The present to me that was within the smashed car was what indicated that. Uh, ah, I fell asleep. Alright, let's clean up just a little more. Hmm, this can't be that long afterwards. Um, I need to return the papers to the shelf. Eh? As if one of the part of the album seems to have been admitted, there are some blank pages in between. Something something. The times when I was little have somehow been left out. The clock. For now, let's try fixing it. Perhaps it's okay like this. Let's fasten the doors and rest for today. These dolls? Seems that way. That must be the bedroom right there. And this is just some... Office. Two room house. Cakey. If I don't clean up by tomorrow. All stuff that I like. Tired. Let's sleep already. Suddenly alone. There's nobody that knew me since I was little, and there's nobody from back then who knew my father and mother. It was terribly lonely. I'm still a little bit confused by the timeline here. Oh, here we go. Always some kind of curse. Haunting or something. Split in your tomb. Twins?
This is probably why you shouldn't have clocks in your house. You don't need to tell time. The only thing those clocks will do is just act kind of weird and malfunction at the perfectly right time to freak you out. The bell of the clock that should have stopped continues ringing over and over. If I don't stop the sound... Huh? The sound of the bell seems to have stopped. Scrap of paper. A photograph? Unfamiliar old man. Hmm. It's one of those fate's gonna drag you to the place situations. Father and mother, and my own name. Then the one with us in the picture here. Could it be... Grandpa? Even after that, I spent my days attending to my busy life. When things finally calmed down, the time when I sorted out my mind, the season changed. It approached my summer vacation. A summer vacation from my long university was enough to make me depressed. And then, I suddenly remembered the photograph I found that day. The one depicted in that photograph could perhaps be my grandfather, right? Thinking that, the loneliness I thought I grew used to instantly descended on me. I want to go meet. I want to try to go meet. Go meet and talk about various things, ask about various things. Thinking what that, I with my summer vacation decided to go to the place in the photograph. And so now, I'm swaying in the strain, headed towards Asaka Village. At least I'm not a little girl. It's kind of the trope that's been played to death a bit. Um, a time of the bus to the village would be three hours later. I guess there's nothing to do but wait. Or wander around. Perhaps get in hijinks. It's late. It's not coming. A car? No, a patrol car. Hey, you there. Punk kid who's about to get into hijinks. Uh, um, the bus isn't coming. Bus? Ah, the passengers have gone too few. That has already gone out of service. Huh? Where I come from, that actually happened. So it becomes very awkward if you don't have a car. What? Did you intend to go to Asaka Village? Yes. I see. All right. It's dangerous for a kid to be in this kind of place. I can send you with a patrol car. Is that all right? Ah, so where are you going in the village? Yes, this place, but do you know it? Oh. Ah, that is the museum of this village. Museum? Though in the past, it seems to have been quite a splendid mansion. It's become a museum ever since the old man who owned the mansion died. And began haunting it. It's really spooky. It's a good place to go if you want to get into hijinks. So, what kind of business do you have at that place? 
No, for relatives. Eh? Um... Well, all right. For now, let's ride over there. Because the museum closes once it gets dark. Um, thank you. No, no problem. More importantly, do you really have some business here? Yes. Well, it's outside its hours, but I think the manager is still in. However, since that person is quite stern, as for wherever you'll be let in... For now, if there's ever anything, you should contact a local police station. Yes. I thank you very much. All right. It's dark. What is this? The scent feels so familiar. Is it just me? Is anyone here? Wandering round in the dark. Gotta find a light switch. Right there. Don't mind the scurrying. It's no big deal. Well, what's up here? Stairs? I love wandering around in the dark. I guess I have to manually use this item. Yeah. There we go. Let's see what this says. Bathroom closed, thank god. Oh, that's a death trap. Well, these are locked. Voice of a little rain. Perhaps due to a lack of ventilation, a dusty atmosphere flows around here. Locked? Also locked? Hmm. This picture book. Do I know it? As I thought, when I was little, here. Nothing can go wrong. Once upon a time, there was quite a beautiful woman in the village. However, the woman with her beauty made men captive and start doing evil things. Because of this, the village became quite desolate, and the men and their wives and their children all starved. Finally, this evil woman was chased away by the people of the village into the mountains, with bad hair care products and lack of moisturizer. Perhaps because this woman wouldn't stop doing evil things, she gradually changed appearance and ended up becoming a monster. The woman who became a monster became the Kotori Obake, who would abduct children and send them to hell. She abducted all the children. The men of the village, however, much they tried to go out and exterminate this monster, were all unable to win against the monster. Then one day, a rain started falling in the village. A light rain, like a drizzle. And for some reason, the Kotori Aobake, together with the rain, came down upon the village. Where is my child? Where is my child? The children going into the forest are not enough. So give me my child. Give my child to me. 
At that time, one villager headed towards the Kotori Aobake. Strange enough, the Kotori Aobake did not attempt to attack this villager. And thus, the spray villager threw a blue shining stone at the Kotori Aobake. When the stone hit the Kotori Aobake, it made a shrieking voice and returned to the forest. Afterwards, the person who threw the rock made prayers that the Kotori Aobake would not come to the village and abduct children, and the Kotori Aobake did not descend upon the village ever again. From then on, the villager became the one called the Ogami-san, and since then protected the village from the forest Kotori Aobake. I don't know how many times I've said this title, but it keeps coming. Children then no longer went to the forest anymore, and the village completely regained its vitality. Oh, it's just a rat. Oh, jeez. That surprised me. And what's even more surprising that despite this thing being a museum of priceless artifacts and art pieces, it still has a rat infection. Or infestation, rather. After the mouse flew out, a key was found in the drawer. So, an obvious bet is I'm a descendant of whoever put this beast to rest, and it's really pissed off. And now it's coming for me. Forever, it's getting me to come to it. Anything here? Another album. Hmm. Maybe there was a descendant from the monster, too. It's like two bloodlines, maybe? Or maybe the bloodline is one and the same? The child is Kenji. He does resemble Dad, maybe. Let's investigate a little more. Perhaps it's as I thought. Let's see, rights to land and estate. Seems like something setting up like a Scooby-Doo plot. The monster never exists! I just drew you here with picture books I laid everywhere. So I can get rid of you and get the inheritance. This museum will be entirely entrusted to the manager. Furthermore, if finally there is no successor, this museum will be donated to the town for inheritance. Kanzaki Kyochuo. That's right. There was definitely also a name in that album, too, so... Anyways, as I thought, this is the place where Granddaddy was. And this place is my father's hometown. So he probably owned the mansion, and then it was donated to the town and became a museum. I see how this works. I really want to stay here a little and investigate, but for now, I need to leave this mansion. Tomorrow, let's come here again, and explain the situation to the manager. If only it will be that easy. Pendant with three blue shining stones. For now, Let's take it along and leave it at the reception. Even so, this is really pretty. Why is it shiny like this? Some sounds can be heard from somewhere. Let's see, this has been moved. Sounds can be heard from further within. Ooh, a red room. Sounds from our nervous side of the door. It's locked. How disappointing. Um, excuse me. 
Who is it? From the other side of the door, a girl's like voice can be heard. I, um, how to say this? I came here because there's something I wanted to know. You're not the manager? Uh, well, perhaps I'm looking for the manager. Ignore these jewels in my back pocket. Um, you are the manager? Uh, no. For now, get me out of here. Yes? I was hiding, so the door became locked and I can't go out now. Huh? What do I do? That would definitely have been the manager, right? I don't know. In fact, I don't want to be found. Then, should I contact the local police? Ooh. I have some suspicions this door is meant to be sealed. Th then, what should I... This is... Use this and look for the key to this room. So, so I have a person who is a fee for something and didn't want to get in trouble. Or it's something far sinister and they're some evil entity that's sealed up behind this door that's really not guarded at all. Let's see, some kind of file room. Office supplies, register... PC. Second floor right. Perhaps this one. Afterwards, I'll need to apologize. I brought it. Hello? Anyone here? Uh, um... Thief? Dark Gods? Are you there? I thought so, but are you... For you to trespass in this kind of place, you're not an insane person, right? No, that's... I just wanted to know a few things and accidentally... Hmm. Are you a student? Could you be a kid from around here? Yes, but... What is it? How do you in this kind of place and getting locked in? Actually, I'm just here because I want to be. Huh? I just don't want to go back home. I don't want to see those kids from school outside. But it's just that, okay? Anyways, I just wanted to be here. That's... But it's quite late, right? If you don't go back home. Even if you don't say it. I know. So annoying. Anyways, that's enough. Onesan, thank you for opening it for me. More importantly, it's best if you flee this place quickly. It gets dangerous once it's past closing time. The manager here is a little out of his mind. As I thought. Onesan, if you can, you should run away too, okay? Well, thanks for leaving me behind. Not even a thank you. It's been locked. For now, I'll be looking for somewhere from which I can get out, so... Onesan, if you get caught, you must not absolutely not talk about me. Uh, wait a little. I don't know if I should trust you yet, or if you're just like some runaway. It's really vague in my mind. The necklace. I need to return it. What is this? A piece from an old calendar? I don't know what it is with paper scraps falling out of things all over the place. Ah, there's a circle on it at eight. Third floor is forbidden. Those are weird documents. Oh, 
Oh, see? This one is drawing picture books. Fun kids trying to steal from my museum. I get a taste of my Nippon Katana Blade. A sword? Maybe we're just misunderstanding him. He's just, he works in a museum, he probably just grabbed the blade and it's like, oh, I gotta polish it, gotta put it away before it rusts. He just looks creepy from a distance. But that's just in, you know, that's his style. Black hair, black outfit, walking around with swords, nothing weird about that. Night Glowstone. I gotta remember this item. I feel like this could become important later. Definitely was a, a line here of some kind. Maybe that sword is made out of night glowstone or some gimmick. Empty rope. Silver key. It was from the upper floor. I just want to show you my new katana! Where are you going? It's really expensive! There's a the sound of footsteps coming closer. Don't somehow keep this shut this door. Rope. Don't your kids want to see my new katana? Throw a chair. But from this old lamp below. My windows! Seems like that person is gone. Need to quickly get out of here. Also, I'm concerned about that kid, too. Oh, the bathroom. Not a good place to be. I think I got a washing machine here. This place is spiffy. Oh, I see what happened here. He was just in his kitchen, he was cooking, he was getting the tub ready, you know? Let's go wash some clothes, gonna take a nice bath. There's some racket going on, some punk kids doing hijinks. Gets out there, it's like, oh, my sword is all so dusty. I ever dust this while it's going down, you know? Gets a sword, sees the kid, tries to talk to him. Food gets burnt. Window gets knocked out. All because of a misunderstanding. This definitely seems like a I'm unsealing something situation. How pretty. It's shining. Why is it? I get a feeling that this light brings forth feelings of all times. So heavy, I can't lift it.
moment of truth. Uh, uh. The man in front held forth a piece of paper. Eh? Oh, okay. Can't talk? <laughs> I knew it. It is past closing time. Huh? We strictly observe the rules. I have called the police to the lobby. Er, uh, well... You are? And why do you carry that sword? A fake sword? I'm the manager. Hmm. And then, I took Sakuma to her house, so... Really? How many times has this been? Causing such trouble to the manager of this place, Suga-kun. And making her parents worry, too. I would turn alone. Besides, I have no intention of causing trouble for Mochizuki, too. You shouldn't say that! Please reflect on your actions! Well, at least she's not a demon or anything. Little... too stereotypical. Um... Ah, right. Sugakun, she seems to have come visit here for some kind of business. She seems to have come from afar. I sent her here from the station. But, well, we talk about that. Of course she wouldn't talk. Onesan is scared, that's not it. Really, the manager here is helplessly incomprehensible. That's offensive. Sakuma. Ah, sorry. Um, there's definitely stuff I haven't talked about yet. But I've come to know most of what I wanted to know. Oh, is that so? Isn't that great? Yes. I was actually originally a resident of this home. The grandchild of Kanzaki Kechuo. I've had various circumstances, and so I came here to confirm them. That's surprising. And so that's why you came to this kind of countryside, right? So there was someone who was related to this house by blood? Eh? That doesn't sound good. Please go back. Ah, uh, well... I've been thinking as for where I can stay today, and if you could show me around the museum from tomorrow, if that's fine with you. No can do. Please go back. I think that's too impudent. Of course, I'm not thinking that I want this mansion, just... just... Go. Back. But, I really want to know about this place. Just recently, my parents went to the Everworld because of a traffic accident. So now, I have nothing. At least, I want to know about this place which is related to it. What are you arguing about? Ah. Ah, how terribly ill-natured of you to sing, go back. Why? This place originally belonged to Onesan's family. Wouldn't just a little be fine? If only I could properly tell them that, that her being here is going to cause a series of misunderstandings, bad things, unleashing of evil, and all sorts of awkward situations. But I can't, because that'd be too simple. Unless I have a video game. Well, let's calm down for now. Also, there's no place nearby where one could stay. Eh? Because it truly is a village with nothing in it. If there's no bus, then there'd be no convenience store or lodging either. Not even 7-Eleven? Well, there is a designated building for emergency lodging, but... It's here, isn't it? That's this museum. Even though the manager here knows that, you don't just say such ill-mannered things. Well, that is true. So it would also be alright for you to stay here, too. This is the designated place in the village, 
Well, Sugakun? That was truly the face of annoyance and suffering. In the end, from that day, I started staying over at the museum. The manager here seems to be someone who doesn't talk, so he communicates through the memos he writes. He does seem to be able to hear my voice. Just, he doesn't seem to be welcoming me very much. Never walk outside this museum or the village was the promise he adamantly made me agree to. I think that once I can organize my thoughts somewhat, I will leave this place immediately. This museum is not merely the village's museum, but also a place where there remain things by which I can feel memories of my father, and a little of my memories of my mother. Each time I experience those things, I get a warm, tight feeling in my chest. However, in this time, a question arose in my mind. Why is it that neither father nor mother talked about this old home? Why did I leave this place? Could there have been something that they have been hiding? The rain has become quite terrible. It's about the time this building closes, so let's go back down for now. So that's it for part one of Forest of Drizzly Rain. So we've got our cast set up. We have our story MacGuffin kind of thing going on. And it's obviously going to be some kind of family descendant curse, I guess. Aside from that, I can't really comment much on the plot yet. I just know that it's right now it's still very much the calm before the storm. And when the monster situation starts unfolding, I think things are probably going to get a little bit bloody due to the legend of it. Anyway, so thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for Forest of Drizzling Rain, Part 2.